So in a number of the programs we've worked with in this series of tutorials, we've needed to have the computer give us some sort of output to the screen. We've done this using the print statement. Um, the print statement, you can put in a few things. You can put in a variable and it'll give you the numerical value of that variable. You can also put in a set of text. Now in programming, we call a set of text like this a string. And that's important to keep in mind because a string is also a type of variable. So for example, instead of just having the computer print this, I can have the computer store this text in a string variable. So let's call this one my string, and we'll hit paste. And basically anything that's inside of quotation marks, it's going to interpret as text. It's going to interpret this as text that needs to be stored in this variable. So if I want to do something with that text, I can print my string. So I should get two identical print statements, one from here where I'm printing the literal characters, and one from here where I'm printing the value of this string variable. And there we go. And so you can see it treats them identically because it has this text stored as my underscore string. Um, and that's very valuable because that means that this is now a variable that I can reference multiple times. It's also a variable that I can modify. So for example, suppose I wanted to add something to this. Uh, it works pretty much the same way as adding to a variable. I can say my string equals my string plus and then more text. Aren't strings great? And now if I hit control two, oh wait, I need to have it print, don't I? Print my string. So now I should get the a series of characters called a string twice, and then I should get the um, the added version. The technical term for that is concatenation, but it's basically like adding. You're adding one string onto another. And you can see it just appends that second string onto this. So this is now the value of my underscore string at the end of the program. You notice it doesn't automatically add a space there. So one of the things you want to keep in mind when you're working with strings is where the spaces are because there's no point in creating a string variable that the user has trouble reading. So, you know, just keep an eye on your punctuation and grammar there. Of course, that's not the only way I could do this. Uh, I can get the same effect by storing this text as another string call it another string and then I can have my string equals my string plus another string and it'll produce the same effect because it's calling this text from my string and this text from another string and it's concatenating those two it's adding them setting one onto the end of the other so obviously the order there matters so if I were to flip these it's gonna place those in the opposite order so aren't strings great, a series of characters is called a string. Now of course sometimes we need to have a string of text followed by some numerical value that the code calculates. So let's suppose for example I had the code do some sort of calculation of 3 plus 2 divided by 4 times 7. And I want to have it tell me the answer is this number. So one way I could do that is I could say my string equals, actually let's save that for something else. Answer string equals, uh, the answer is, and then I can say plus. Now if I just say plus A, the computer's not really gonna know what to do because this is gonna be a string, this is gonna be a number. I don't believe it um, combines those appropriately, but let's find out. Okay, so I, I take that back. GlowScript is, is smart enough to combine um, the text and the number, so that's pretty nice. That's, that's a surprise to me. Last time I checked on uh, regular vPython, that, I don't think that was the case, but that's good to know that it's smart enough to do that. If you want to be safe with it, you can use the str function, which converts whatever's in here into a string. So let's hit control two. And here it does the same thing. Um, so basically this 8.75 gets converted to a string, but it's automatically doing that. Or you can just use this function just kind of as a, as a safety feature to make sure that it's combining uh, the same type of data together. Now in vPython, we don't just want to have text printing to the screen. It would also be nice if we could get text on the visual display itself. And we can do that using an object called label. Um, basically what you do with labels, you give it a position 
uh, let's give it the position 000 for right now. And then you can give it a text value. Um, and it, this works the same way. This is now a, this is gonna be a string, so we have to open it with quotation marks. Uh, this is a label. And you close that up, hit control two, and there you go, there's your label. Now the, uh, the interesting thing about the label is you can rotate the screen around and the label stays in place. Of course, you can't really tell that right now because there's nothing else in the uh, display. So let's create a sphere. Uh, we're gonna say sphere. Um, let's give it a position of one comma zero comma zero. Let's give it a radius of 0 0.1 and let's make it red. There we go. So we'll hit control two. Oops, position must be a vector. Oops, sorry. I remembered it for the label, for, but I forgot it for the sphere. Control two. So I can right click and rotate around. You see the, the sphere moves around, but the label stays in place. So the labels are tied to a specific spot on the screen. Um, so they don't, um, they're, they're, they're not going to, uh, they're, they're not going to change based on how you, based on how you rotate it. Um, now, of course, what's interesting about this is I can use this label to give me information about what's going on in my, uh, in my program. So let's call this thing label for, for short for label, since labels uh, is, is, a, is a name taken by the uh, object there. And let's, let's do this, let's animate this ball. So we'll say for i in range zero to oops, zero comma, uh, let's make it go 20 steps. And let's say ball.pause.x equals ball.pause.x plus some amount dx. So I need to define a dx up here, dx. Uh, let's make it 0 0.1. So we'll have our animation like we've had before. Oh, I need to put in a rate 100, there we go. So we've seen this type of animation before. The ball is gonna move along to the right. That's a little bit fast. Let's make the rate 10. There we go, and you can see the label stays nice and safely in the center there. But let's suppose I wanted the label to tell me something about the ball. What I can do is I can change the label's text value to be the ball is at x equals, and then I can say plus string ball.position.x. Oops, went too far, there we go. So what's gonna happen now is each frame, the ball's position is gonna update, so you're gonna see the ball animate, but also the label's text is gonna change each frame to match whatever the ball's position is. Let's give that a try, control two. Cool, so now I've got a little uh, display to tell me this. Um, you notice that I get uh, a lot of unnecessary decimal places because this is what um, the uh, this is what the position gets uh, uh, gets stored as. It gets stored with all of this data. The way you can avoid that, the way you can have the code uh, specify the uh, the amount of information that gets printed to the screen, is using a format statement. I'm going to bring over the um, the GlowScript documentation page for this because it's not entirely intuitive. Basically what you do is you use a little format uh, set of braces here in place of where you want the variable to go. So in our case that's going to be at the end here. So it interprets these curly braces as meaning a formatting statement. So it's going to be looking for uh, the next thing to be formatted in this and in this way, um, the dot one F indicates it's floating and how many uh, significant digits you want or how many decimal places you want. Um, and then what we do, instead of having plus the, um, the variable that you want, we just place that inside of a dot format function. So over here we'll say, don't need the string anymore, I can just say dot format. So basically it's gonna look for a format command over here and it's gonna place this thing in this spot in that format. So instead of getting this long thing, we should just get one decimal place. Let's hit control two. Cool, so that's what we get. So we get a, so, yeah, so the point one means that's the number of decimal places you're going to get. Now suppose on the other hand, I wanted this to display two decimal places. I would just change this one to a two because it's indicating two decimal, two digits after the decimal point. Let's hit control two. 
and there you get your two uh, decimal places. You can even increase it to, I mean, whatever number you want. I can make it six decimal places. That's a little bit overkill for this problem, but you know, suppose you had a smaller step size, you would want uh, you would want to be keeping track of more decimal places. So suppose we made this thing 0 .001 and I wanted to keep track out to three decimal places. Um, I would also need to increase this to go the same distance. Uh, here I can keep track out to the third decimal place, which is pretty cool. Um, I think I can increase the speed of that simulation a little bit, make it go a little bit faster. There we go. So that's a handy way to display some information on the screen. There's other options for this uh, label um, object. I'll let you explore those. I'll include the link to this documentation page uh, below. Um, but there's all sorts of things you can set. You can uh, determine how uh, offset the, the text box is from its location. Um, you can change the, 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 the height of the border. You can change the thickness of the border. You can even change whether there's a border at all. Um, so there's a lot of neat um, options you can check out with this thing. So thank you so much for watching. I will see you next time. Bye-bye.